Welcome to the Lazy Geeks Network. What you want, what you want, what you want. Welcome everybody to the Lazy Geeks Podcast here on the Lazy Geeks Network. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, after, what was it, two and a half months? Yeah. Two and a half months, yeah. So, uh... In case you guys didn't read my post on the website, which I'm pretty sure is most of you, um, you know, because, you know, people don't like to read anymore. They just like to. Fuck that. Yeah. You know, they like the auditory sensation, you know, uh, and basically <laughs> uh, it, it came down to essentially kind of just sad to say I kind of missed Adam when talking about the news. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> I promise myself I wouldn't cry. Uh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, and and I think in, in some instances, one of the big reasons why we changed was simply because we had wanted to create more time for ourselves to do other things, you know, like yeah. in Adam's case, you know, family or whatever, because, you know, his priorities are all sorts of fucked up, um, you know, and uh and, and I think in, in some instances, it worked to an extent, but, you know, it just, it felt really weird just doing it by myself, not having somebody to work off of. And then when we do our other shows, it was kind of like, oh, yeah, what do you think about this? You know, and it's like, I, I kind of liked having that, that, you know, back and forth that we had in, in some news areas. So... Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, I don't know if you want to say anything about it, but I mean, it is what it is. It's it, it was a good idea, but I feel like it was just um, it was just reading the news. Yeah, it was and like, it became yeah. it became a situation where it was just like you could just do this yourself. <laughs> like, right. why am I doing it for you? <laughs> right, exactly. I hear to hold, hold you your know. fucking hand. You know? Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, and that's that's kind of what it came down to it. And you know, and because, you know, we can make changes like that, you know, and, and I'm willing to say we you know, was it a mistake? Possibly, you know, but at the same time, you know, it was trying to think of well, cause it you know, I mean it takes an hour or so to do a ten minute show a week, in some cases, in Adam's case, five minutes, you know, an hour for a five minute show. Um, <laughs> listen, <laughs> it, you know what it was too, is I even, I got, I got used to the editing. It, that wasn't a problem. You know, I got it, right. but it, I'm such like a, it has to be a certain way. Mm-hmm. And then I'd still fuck it up. And then I'd be like, God damn, I just got so pissed <laughs> off. And then the software I was using was, I was fighting with it. Like I was using <laughs> Sony, um, acid or something all oh, right yeah. and it just was constantly doing weird shit that i had to edit out and i'm like god damn it <laughs> it wasn't fun you know uh, and that's the thing and and you know and then it became kind of like it just kind of hit me the the day that i t- spoke to you about it which was i think like a went thursday or something like that right um i was like well well what if we to create more time because we wanted to create more time because we you know we no longer as as many of you know we don't no longer do news stories on the site and it's just kind of the site to host the podcast and then that was like well why don't we go back to the old way do both shows one night and then have six days off where we're not recording anything and at least the five days in between you know the weekend because that's pretty much what we do stuff for the shows on the weekend you know right. during the week we don't have anything to do related to that so one we can you know live our lives do what we need to do but yet on monday and thursday have content out you know so so they get it and and i th- think this one worked uh, this way works a little bit better because one it's you and me talking again and you know going with the news and then we the second podcast isn't another news which i think was the problem with the last one the last time we did it, it was you know and we would do them on sunday but then the second news story would already be a week old 
So it kind of became irrelevant at that point. Right. So here, you know, we have this and then later this, you know, for later this week for everybody else, uh, cheap seats, the 1989 Batman. Um, that was coming. fun. That's... Hey, I, I was watching the movie uh, last night and, um, you know, I'm not really ready to go into details, but I've had kind of a kind of a shitty week, you know, yeah. and I'm just like, oh, fuck, you know, and I put the movie on and I just. I felt like a little kid. Like most of my <laughs> notes are not negative. They're all like, oh my God, this is the shit. <laughs> like I completely fell into the movie and it was, it was really cool. Which, which I think will, uh, which will, I think work well because I, I mean, there's a lot of it. It was just like, okay, kind of cool. But there's also a lot of like, what kind of questions that I had. So yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it'll, it'll work well in, in that combo. It was a couple of things. I think towards the end when the nostalgia wore off, I started going, <laughs> wait a minute, why? <laughs> <laughs> and that episode will be available on Thursday for you guys to pick up. And that's pretty that's much right. in honor of Batman versus Superman that comes out in like that's two right. weeks, uh, which I will be seeing. So, uh, so yeah, so we're back again doing the Lazy Geeks podcast, whole new renumbering scheme. You know, if you read comics, you know what we're talking about. Uh, so, uh, so now the way the show is going to run up is we're going to, it's just going to be a couple of stories, biggest news stories to us of the previous week. So for this one, it's the coolest news stories to us for the week of March 13th. So, um. But uh, I, you know, it's funny because once we once we stopped doing the podcast, I I, had, I know I'd been talking about it when we were doing the other show, but um, I actually I never actually said that I finally ended up breaking down and got an iPad Air, and which I'm using right now, <laughs> <laughs> on the little easel monitoring Twitter as as we go through this. Right. Um, it it was weird because like I've had it for probably about what a month now, over a month now. And I, it's it's hard to get used to a tablet because I'm so used to using my phone for yes. everything. And sometimes I forget that I have the iPad until I'm messaging you on Facebook Messenger. And then I hear, like, my phone chime. And then I hear this other beep. And I'm like, the fuck is that? <laughs> then I turn around, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's because it's on my iPad. I forget about that. Yeah. So it's... It, it's cool because, like, you know, it's easier to read stuff and, you know, and maintain that. But it's, I don't know, it's just this, diff it's like a difficult transition for me because I'm so used to wearing out the battery of my phone that I'm not used to actually using the fucking tablet. Right, right. And, you know, my brother also got a tablet too, but he, you know, he uses it kind of like a beast. The only thing he tends to use for his laptop is, you know, like... Uh, Pornography. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know. <laughs> No, you know, just doing like, you know, like banking and stuff like that because you have multiple windows and shit like that. And, right. Uh, and then those Facebook games because, you know, some of those Facebook games, you can't use the apps on them. So, you know, yeah, because because that's important. Right. <laughs> it's, it's 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 all about priorities in life. Right. And if you can't play, if you can't update your fucking Farmville farm, right. what's the point? Exactly. You know, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh man uh so yeah so it, it's i i was like and and that was the thing it's like you know i've had it for a month and a half and i actually realized today like you know after the time change i guess because you know now we're on daylight savings time so adam and i are officially on the same time now uh right. they're oh by the way uh my, my brother told me this i don't uh, uh they're trying to get rid of daylight savings time here Thank so, God. Yeah. So it's so useless. It like really... I live in Arizona. I live in Arizona. We don't have daylight savings time here. Or immigrants. I remember. <laughs> huh? I go or immigrants. <laughs> right. Uh, as far as they want you to know. Um, I you now. I was born in in Massachusetts where we did have it, and I remember having to turn the clocks back and all that. But I was a little kid, so I lived in L.A. for like three. Was it three years? It was about three years. And. Um, Every time it would happen, I go, "Oh my god, it's such a waste of fucking time." <laughs> it was just so, and then everyone's confused for a couple days. Right. It's just like this is so stupid. It's yeah. just not necessary. Oh, I know. And it's like I was talking to Heather about it, and it's like it takes you two weeks to like adjust because instead of getting up at six thirty or seven thirty, you're getting up at six thirty or five thirty or whatever it is. Right. You know? And it, it's just like, why? There's no point in it now. 
and it's funny too because like the when the week of you know john oliver uh re uh uh did a throwback thursdays uh of a thing of daylight savings time why is this still a thing <laughs> Yeah, you know? yeah, it's it's not necessary. It really and is it. Is it only America that does it? No, there's. St- uh, I think in his bit they showed other countries that did observe it, but a lot of it stopped. A lot of them stopped because you know. And they used we to, like it, to hold it, on to things. Here. Right. <laughs> Back in the day, it was important for uh, for farmers, wasn't it? Right. Yeah, that's I think was the whole reason for it. But now it's like, we have time. What time it is calculated to the fucking nanosecond. It's just not necessary. We don't. No one goes outside and looks at the sun. I wonder what time it is. <laughs> yeah, you know. I know. So it's just like it's it's. I'm like, ugh. But uh, but with that whole thing, I just I was like going, oh, I should really use my iPad. So I pull out the iPad and it has like a shit ton of like updates because I haven't updated in so long, <laughs> and it started glitching on me. I was like, what the fuck? You know, like like I was going oh well i don't use that anymore i don't use that anymore so i started to delete them then when the updates came up it re-downloaded all of them because i i guess my i had the access to the icloud and i was like you know what fuck this shit so i started over today like brand new i re i restarted it as you know did a hard restart on it and then just like re-downloaded shit and now right. i go fuck the icloud bit <laughs> you know so uh but now it seems. Hey, like- you know what? It's not just iCloud though. Um, what were we talking about? This is kind of off topic, but it just reminds me of fucking OneDrive's been playing games too. Like they used to give us tons of space, and, and oh, then they okay. just take it away. I'm like, what? Well, you can't do that. You can't give me space and then remove it. <laughs> I know <laughs> it's like assholes. Yeah, because like before it was, what was it? Ten like what do you call it? Like ten terabytes of free space if you have Office 365. Yeah, and then like two weeks ago, you get a fucking email saying that, oh, by the way, uh, we're revamping this, so now you're just gonna have one terabyte um, of space on that. And I mean, I'm not even close to using up that one terabyte. But then it's like, wait, what? You know, it's like I understand when you were giving away, you know, you know, unlimited, and somebody was using, and there's always that asshole that has to use up 75 terabytes of fucking space. But right. it's like, really, you have to go ahead and turn it down to one. It's like, well, I don't know if OneNote updated for Steve, but I did see it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, I um, I fucking I got bored, as you do, and <laughs> and I just went back to Linux. So here's the thing: I'm running Linux again, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not in such a militant way <laughs> about how I'm not like fuck Windows because exactly. when Windows eight when Windows eight was a thing, I that's that was me. I'm like I right. fucking can't stand this, you know. Windows 10 is still cool. It was glitching out a little bit, but that's to be expected. It's a new OS. You know, I did a couple updates, and especially after I, I've done a fair amount of upgrades to my computer, I switched over to the i7, got a new motherboard, and it's just been it's just been acting funny, you know. And um, I was like, well, fuck it, you know, I'm gonna go back to Linux to see what's what's going on. So right now I have. Um, Linux, uh, or which, which version of Linux? Oh, I have Ubuntu Mate, or Mate, <laughs> 15.10, which is basically, it's not the traditional Ubuntu look. It's, uh, it looks more, it kind of looks Windows XP in, in form, but not in style, which is fine. And then um, I, have, so I have two monitors. I have my 27-inch um, monitor, which right now is running Linux. It's all running Linux. But then I have... Um, windows 7 in a virtual machine full screened on my other 32 inch monitor which has mm. all the uh the stuff for the podcast which isn't really necessary it's just because i thought back when we were still doing system updates i was like well my recording software is for windows i just fucking set it up that way so it's working out famously no problems um i think i've learned a lot from my mistakes not to fuck with shit as much <laughs> <laughs> so what I do now, if I want to fuck around with Linux, I install another version of Linux in another virtual machine, and then I fuck with it, you know, and I keep my stable one I'm using uh, running just fine. Because um, if you guys used to listen to the old show, 
he always knew <laughs> Adam was like, oh, I'm back on Linux again. And, oh, I got rid of Linux. I kept fucking up. And it's like, no, he kept fucking up. Yeah, it, it was 100% always my fault. And I actually feel bad because I really do love Linux. I, I like the whole, the whole like, uh, philosophy of it and how it works and how you can really get into the machine. But then when I would break something – typical dude i'd be like this shit's fucked up <laughs> and it's like yeah because you fucked it up asshole you know so um i'm running Linux, so I'm very happy with it uh the other thing too because we were talking about OneDrive, i back up my stuff on OneDrive right now but one it takes a lot of a time decade <laughs> to, uh, yeah and uh, there's a lot of stuff i don't have backed up on there i have backed up on a cheesy little external drive i have which have had for way too long to be backing up shit on yeah um so i've decided because i did the upgrades to my computer i'm only if i get a case a power supply and some hard drives i'll have enough to make a full-fledged computer system with all the leftover parts that i have mm -hmm. so i was thinking about building a home server and i know i was talking to uh steve about about this for him because he has a lot of stuff he needs to back up as well but, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to do it and just hook it up, and it won't even have a monitor. It'll be one of those servers that I'll fucking just tap into on my computer, and it just will hold. I'll have it back. I have two computers now because I just built a new system for the family that's downstairs. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll have to – I've been meaning to fucking take some pictures of it and throw it up on Instagram, and I just haven't had the time. Um, and then I'm, I can have that computer – and my main machine run a program called Crash Plan, uh, which runs on Linux, Windows, and Mac. And it's it will it will update your things it will back up your things automatically um, over the cloud if you pay for it. But for free, it will do it over the local network. So if you have something like a server, it will do it for free. And it's a great program. Like it, it just works great. I can have it do like daily updates, just everything. So if a system goes down, I'm right back up, reimage the whole thing. So um, I think I'm gonna do that uh, because there I do like to fuck with shit. <laughs> so if I have everything backed up, I can be like, Ugh, and then just reimage the drive. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, because because uh, we started talking about this yesterday because I was bored at work and um on Saturday and uh. I was telling Adam that I was actually looking on Amazon because I was looking to get a new external because I haven't uh, I have two hard drives on my computer. I have my my C drive and I also have a storage drive which I've used for this is like my second computer I've used this drive on because I just yeah. you know I put everything on it and then I have an external that is probably a little too old for me to be back and shit up like Adam <laughs> you know it's like right. so I found a three terabyte desktop. Uh, external for 90 bucks on Amazon and I'm like oh that might be something to do it's going to need its own little spot because it's you know one of those like base uh, you know those com the the base that you used to get for your uh, speakers on your PC kind of size right so uh, and I was like you know that might be good because I'm putting I'm I'm rec I'm actually doing my PC to do more of the heavy lifting for my laptop I'm kind of streamlining it streamlining it so I can do like minor photoshop editing but mostly writing and most of the important documents that i have on there i'm saving to the cloud so it doesn't take as much time but i have like a lot of the podcast stuff on the cloud because i kind of don't trust the equipment <laughs> so if i you know because it, 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 it's kind of old and i'm afraid that it might fail then i'm screwed but then i was thinking well you know if i get a newer you know, the three terabyte kind of thing, then I can put it back on that drive and then back everything up to that. So then again, like in your instance, if I lose like my C drive, you know, I can, right. I can go ahead and, and do that. So yeah, there's, there's uh yeah. It, I mean, it's, it, there's a point, you know, Adam's like, oh, why is the, is the shit fucking up on you? I'm like, no, it's just getting that old where you're starting to like, I don't know how long this is going to hold. And I would really hate to lose everything just because I, you know, I didn't want to get something new. Yeah, I mean, it's it, backups are always important, um, and it, any way you do it, just make sure you're doing it. You know what I mean? Cause right. I, it's so funny because I've I've spent a good part of my adult life telling people you've got to back up your shit, and I'm currently not backing up my shit. Like it's easy to forget. 
yeah to do it you know so do it it's also like because you know we have i have onedrive and I'm, i really use onedrive on my phone because for like pictures and stuff like that you know because not everything gets posted on facebook and it's you can't download anything from instagram you know right. and so for me it was just like you know my i have my uh phone set up to OneDrive so it automatically once I hit Wi-Fi it automatically uploads my pictures to OneDrive so it's just like you know it's keep it on there because Heather's like Heather's iPhone crashed and she was like could I get any of the pictures I had on there I'm like not nah, I told you up uh, you know it's like you know sync it to OneDrive you have OneDrive sync it otherwise you're gonna lose it so but then I'm just uh, and and I've noticed with OneDrive too. Well, one I'm on Linux and <laughs> Linux and OneDrive don't really like to talk to each other. Really? I can get <laughs> I can get it to sync, but it it doesn't work half uh-huh. of the time. <laughs> the only problem is is I've noticed that Windows 10 isn't working half of the time when it comes to syncing to OneDrive, uh-huh. which is you know I'll forgive that it doesn't work in Linux, right. but <laughs> it should work in Windows 10. You know, and I, I, uh, it took me, oh, a week to download, to sync up with the Lazy Geek drive and all that. I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, yeah. um, I have it now, which is great, but yeah. I just, it was just ridiculous, yeah. you know? So, um, I think this is a better way. And then for cloud stuff. Uh, OneDrive is still great to back up the photos and like small files like that. Yeah. Uh, my phone automatically sends them out, and then documents you can do that on OneDrive too. So it's, it, I mean, I think it's just the big files that are the problem. Like you yeah. don't want to store a bunch of movies on OneDrive. Like some asshole that took a, that got the whole f- unlimited, <laughs> unlimited yeah. uh, storage taken away because that asshole. Thanks, motherfucker. All bootleg movies. <laughs> yeah, and shit. But but yeah, I mean when I loaded all the podcasts onto OneDrive. It took five days for that shit to upload. Yeah, and I mean... ridiculous. I get it. Right. You know, I I understand why it takes that long, but I don't want it to. Right. And if I had had a home server, everything would be in my house. Right. You know what I mean? And there's also the kind of the, I have it. It's not on someone else's thing. I mean, I'm not a person who's freaking out about security, but... If I wanted to, you know, maybe I got a questionable piece of uh, <laughs> piece of file there, you know, I can keep it myself. You know what I mean? Right. But I'm not saying that I would. I'm just saying theoretically. If don't one judge. were to, you know. Yeah, don't judge me. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Well, I think on that note, we should jump into the headlines. Yeah. Yeah. So if you listen to my systems update on March 9th, a day before the third and final Captain America Civil War trailer was slated to be released, you heard me kind of badmouth the site Latina Review. And as of today, I still stand by what I said. Their report, which went out all over the internet, they claimed, and I quote, we were missing the third piece of the messaging, meaning the trailer featuring Spider-Man, that is being that was is being called the payoff trailer internally. We've been told it heavily features Spider-Man. On that show, I stated that too many sites look to them because they've been right once in a very long while. The last big blunder was the story that Christopher Nolan and Christian Bale would be returning to DC for the Justice League movies. Mm. And, and I called bullshit back then. And I stated that we would not see a trailer strictly strictly focusing on Spider-Man. Simply put, because it's a Captain America movie. I said that we would see Spider-Man probably at the end in costume. And if we were lucky, maybe saying something. I was right. <laughs> of course, we saw Spider-Man all three seconds of him, and everybody went ape shit due to the costume, saying it was looking all CG. Well, so does Iron Man, Iron Patriot, Hulk, and many more. There was uh, a there was a, uh, a a meme I saw that it had uh, it had Spider-Man stand standing, squatting, whatever he's doing, uh, Spider-Manning on top <laughs> of a, a car. And and there's all these little comments like the suit looks CGI, this is that, and then at the bottom it was that uh, 
that dude who always used to yell on the fucking Jersey Shore. Oh, right. You know I mean? And it yeah. says he was in there for two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, uh. and, and to me, that the people that are complaining about the costume are the same people that say they're true Batman fans and have only seen the Nolan movies. Yes. So it, it, it was like, I mean, there was that gif that uh that went out online which showed spider the 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 reveal of spider-man at civil war and then all those images of like oh my god you know ben fred savage jumping up will smith fainting you know all (laughs) that was me will smith oh my goodness (laughs) i mean that was that was me because it was just like the trailer was just so good too like the trailer really was really really good, and then it was just like even the, without Spider Man in it, it was exactly it was a great trailer. And then at the very end, you get that you know, hey guy, hey everyone, and then you're just kind of like, oh my god, you know. I thought it was funny. They were even a lot of people were talking shit. Why does he sound so fucking dorky? I'm like, do you not know who Spider Man is? Exactly. These are the people. That's how he, that's how he talks. He's these, a kid. These are the people that only seen the Tobey Maguire and the uh, and Andrew Garfield. Spider Man's. They don't know anything about Spider Man. I honestly thought it was perfect exactly. that he lands. He does this epic flip, yeah. lands on the car, and then just hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that was and, so perfect. And the eyes, they kind of tightened. The Spider Man, the eyes on the costume, kind of yeah. tightened with it. And a legit, a legit theory on that that I'm actually kind of leaning towards is that he's got cameras built into the eyes. Oh, which which would make sense, mm-hmm. you know, so and if and you look at the comic something... books, if you look at the the, the comics, uh, you'll see him do that, too. Like the eyes will emote, you yeah. know, and because they were. Well, that's the thing is they're talking about how, oh, now the Deadpool's doing having Spider-Man do it. But if you look at the difference now, Deadpool, they do it because it's fucking Deadpool and it, it, his eyes are going like normal eyes would go. But if you look at Spider-Man, that trailer, they close like a machine. Yeah. Like so, I really do think it's cameras in there. He's just taking pictures of everything. Yeah, and and for those of you that sit there and bitch about, oh, the costume doesn't look looks fake, and the whole eyes actually read a Spider-Man comic. <laughs> that's that's my yeah. whole thing, you know. Ugh. He definitely looks legit. He does. I love that under ruse. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he fucking takes Cap Shield. And handcuffs him with webs. Right. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. I know when I saw them, and, and then I saw the trailer. I was like, going, oh, they didn't just fight. But then all of a sudden, all right, I'm tired of this. And then, the, and then when I saw the the webbing coming, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I, was like, I think it was great too because like, while the movie's not going to be focused on Spider Man, and it really shouldn't be, right? Um, I like how they gave it a little. It was almost like an after credit scene of the trailer. Mm-hmm. Just to say, we know you guys are waiting for this. Let me give right. you a little taste. Exactly. You know, and, and I thought that was really cool and kind of kind of respectful of the character because I've been tired and we've talked about this many times about how such an iconic character. Like no one dislikes Spider Man. It right. might not be your thing, but you don't hate Spider Man. You know, and and they um the the way that Sony's been treating the characters has been fucked up. Yeah. And I'm happy that Sony kind of woke up and said, "All right, guys, we need to." <laughs> We need to call daddy and tell him how to how it, ask him how to make a movie. Exactly. You it's know. like, yeah, we tried to fix this uh, this engine and we couldn't really do it, so just call dad and then have <laughs> yeah, make, he'll, do it. He'll, he'll make this per like a kid. Sony's Sony's the college girl that has to call dad because her sink broke. <laughs> dad, I don't, the I don't know how to it, fix this. The washing machine spinning water. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I can't I'm, looking for, I'm looking forward to. Uh, seeing what they're going to do with a solo movie because i know sony has more hands than that right but um it's going to be the same actor which is perfect right. and i think that it's um it's also going to be uh with marvel having more of a creative say right. of no i think spider-man needs to be portrayed this way you've done it twice let us do it now and we all know you motherfuckers don't know what you're doing <laughs> now let's let's call a spade a spade though spider-man 2 with toby mcguire was the shit right that was a good movie yeah, I don't care what anybody says. The third one was whack. Right. The first one was okay. I kind of I, I liked it because it was a Spider-Man movie. Right. But when I go back and watch it now, it doesn't really hold up. Um, and I think what really was good for Spider-Man Two with Tobey Maguire wasn't even Tobey Maguire. It was the bad guy was the shit. Yeah. Doc Ock was Doc the Ock. shit. Yeah. And the it's third and one that's the thing is is that you know as much as Sony likes bringing you know the Green Goblin into it, I think. Doc Ock is the stronger of the villains. Spider-Man has such better villains than the Green Goblin. 
Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, I know a lot of Spider Man fans might be pissed off to hear that, but I'm not that into the Green Goblin. Yeah. He's an okay character. For me, he could be B roll and I wouldn't even question it. I would have actually even preferred the Hobgoblin. The Hobgoblin. But you kind of can't do the Hobgoblin without doing Green Goblin first. And then yeah, there's also but... um, Kingpin, Sinister Six. Oh, yeah. I mean, they could have they could have just did Kingpin, but then when you do that, now it's an ensemble movie. Right. You know, and, and it becomes a different thing. And then it looks like Marvel had the rights to Kingpin anyway because we've seen him in uh, the Daredevil. recent Daredevil show. Yeah. So it, it's all a rights thing. Like, who can yeah. they use? Who can't they use? Can't they use? Yeah, you know. exactly. And next week, season two of Daredevil, motherfucker. Yes, sir. Also, too, one thing that always pissed me off is Spider-Man 3 is a horrible movie. Yeah. But the dude who played the Sandman was the shit. He was awesome, but I, I – and, I, and <laughs> I'm going to touch on this in the uh, in, in the Batman – in the cheap seats in the Batman. But that whole thing of making him Uncle Ben's killer was like, what the fuck? Yeah, that was kind of uh, whatever. Yeah. But – Anyway, it's but like, okay, Joe, chill. Why don't you, why don't you <laughs> calm down? <laughs> but uh, it was, but yeah, the trailer was awesome. And and for those of you that are bitching about Spider Man, shut up, yeah. shut up. Wait till the movie comes out. Oh, and speaking of which, the tickets, advanced tickets for uh, C- Civil War are already on sale. Yes. Guess it's your turn. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was thinking. I was reading your article. <laughs> the fucking trailer. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Now on to some really dumb fucking news. <laughs> um, this made no sense to me. <laughs> so EverQuest Next, which was supposed to be the next EverQuest game. If you don't know, EverQuest is a heavyweight name in the MMO space. Uh, EverQuest 1 changed the fucking landscape of MMOs. And that was back in like 99 um, EverQuest 2 eh, was all right, but it, it had a pretty good following, and the success of but the success of EverQuest brought about World of Warcraft and stuff like that. So um, Daybreak Games, the developer, um, the current developer or whatever of EverQuest, <laughs> uh, was talking about EverQuest Next, which is going to be the next one's going to. The, they were showing screenshots and videos. I mean, this this game looked crisp as fuck. You know, everybody's looking forward to it. Well, that's not going to happen anymore. Um, and it, it's really funny when you hear why they have ceased development on this MMO. <laughs> um, here's a quote uh, from an article uh, from the official Daybreak Games official website. They announced it. So it says, uh, for, the, for those familiar with the internals of game development, you know that cancellations are a reality we must face from time to time. Daybreak President Russell Shanks wrote, inherent to the creative process are dreaming big pushing hard and being brutally honest with where you land. In the case of EverQuest Next, we accomplished incredible feats that astonished industry insiders. Unfortunately, as we put together the pieces, we found that it wasn't fun. So <laughs> let me sum this up, okay? They're making a game, all right? And you can kind of think about game development. You are the god of that world. You are creating it, okay? So let's say the Christian god. Okay, we're going to throw that. I'm not going to be disrespectful. I'm just putting this right. Let's say he makes trees, right? Right. And he puts them in upside down by mistake. And they look stupid and they keep falling over. And then he goes, you know, I think I'm just going to cancel this whole universe thing. Because <laughs> the trees just don't work. It isn't fun. Make it fun then. <laughs> you know, <laughs> come on. I didn't, I didn't know MMOs were supposed to really be fun. I mean. Well, you know. <laughs> You know, so EverQuest Next was announced in 2010. I know it's like I, I was looking at it; it's like six years, and right. they just and decide like now that it's not fun. <laughs> little fucking cock tease um, announcements for it. Nothing real major. They came out with um, oh, I can't even remember what it's called. Landmark, uh, EverQuest Landmark, which which was supposed to be a major portion of EverQuest Next, where you you could build your own house this thing was the shit and it's already been out people have been fucking with it in the beta and you can you can really customize it was, it was one of the i've saw some videos on it. it's one of the best um house developments in an mmo i've ever seen 
well, I, I don't know what the fuck's going on with that. You know, <laughs> if, if it's because uh, here it says uh, Landmark, a spinoff title that is planned for official launch on PC this spring. But it's supposed EverQuest. to use some of that, right? Some of what EverQuest created? Well, yeah, because Landmark is was originally a portion of EverQuest Next that they, they just gave out early. I, I don't fucking... First of all, that was weird. Yeah. I mean, but I'm like, okay. But it was... It's sad. It's it's sad to me that you have this thing that everyone is amped up for. And then obviously there's a bigger story behind the scenes, but to give a reason of it wasn't fun. Come right. On. And exactly. it wasn't fun as a quote. <laughs> like I'm not summing it up. Right. <laughs> it's 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 so fucking pathetic. And um I hear that Daybreak might not be around either. Um mm. because back when Daybreak was still Sony cuz Daybreak okay, so Sony Online Entertainment was who made EverQuest, and then they 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 kind of broke off and became Daybreak, and have done pretty much nothing, uh, because their big MMO they canceled just now. So they've they've put out Landmark, which is like a part of an MMO that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so fucking asinine. It's so you, it's like six years on a project that you're just not even going to release. It's like I know, like what a waste of fucking money. Exactly. If EverQuest Next was going to come out on the PC and the PS4, so console gamers were excited about it too. Right. Um, I don't know, man. And it's not like you're, you know, it's not like you're Lucas Arts where you can develop, you know, thirteen thirteen and then even kind of tease some of the uh, images and then not and then just get rid of it. Well, here here's their here's their other games because they they run H one Z one, which is like a zombie open world survival game, and they plan to release H one Z one King of the Hill, it's an expansion on PS four and Xbox One this summer. They still work on DC Universe Online and Planet Side two, who which plays I don't know. DC Online still? Um, who the fuck still plays those games? Um, and then there's Daybreaks passion to grow the world of everquest remains undiminished shank said yeah well <laughs> fucking yank this dude <laughs> you know, it's it's like come on so i don't know what the fuck they're planning on they still own the rights to everquest everquest is is a big fucking deal yeah you know it's a franchise that people want to see come back you know and and I, they're I just see, fucking I, I see a thq type of ending for them you know where yeah, because the titles they have are not that big their biggest title is probably h1z1 but that's been out for a while yeah you know I, what I mean? dc universe online i'm surprised that's still around planet side 2 as well you and, know so yeah i kind of see this as kind of being a thq kind of thing where they're going to end up uh you know shutting down and then all the other video game uh companies are going to pillage it for you know uh, for all its IP, so someone's going to end up with EverQuest, and uh, <laughs> watch it. Why? Well, yeah, watch it ends up being with like EA or Ubisoft. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I'm reading some of the comments too. Like, um, some people are like, it might be a good thing that they canceled it because they pretty much ruined DC Universe Online. Yeah, like DC Universe Online when it first came out, it wasn't that bad. It was okay, you know. And now it's shit. Everyone complains about it. So I also never understand when people complain about something. Continue. Why they still play it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like heroin's really fucking up my life, but can I have some heroin? Yeah. It's you know, like, it doesn't make any sense. You know, yeah. Well, it's like, you know, the the, the, the people that tell you that smoking's a bad habit are actual smokers. <laughs> you know, it's that kind yeah. of thing. You know, where they're like, you smoke? No. Yeah, it's a really bad habit. <laughs> yeah. I used to do that. When I smoke cigarettes, he's like, "Oh, I don't smoke." I'm like, never start. <laughs> That's what he used to tell people. As you're puffing away right there, you're... right? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, back in two in November of 2015, EA released Star Wars Battlefront, and since then they've released free content like the Battle of Jakku and the upcoming Hut Hut's contracts that will be released later this month. But according to a listing by GameStop, it seems that those of you that spent 50 bucks for the season pass will finally be able to get some use out of it. Outer Rim, the first premium expansion for the game, will drop on April 5th. It seems that's a slight delay from the originally announced March date. 
The expansion will cost you $14.99 for those of you without the season pass. However, if you're an Xbox Live Gold member, you can get a $5 discount on the $49.99 season pass. And oh, some, no. And some retailers are offering PlayStation 4 codes for less. Uh, Outer Rim adds new heroes, of course. You get uh, Rodian, Greedo, and Lando Calrissian's co-pilot, uh, Nimnum, as well as new maps set in Jabba the Hutt's palace, his sail barge, and Num's home world. New weapons are also on the way in Outer Rim. Outer Rim will offer a new game type extraction, which is basically a capture the flag variant in which rebels have to bring a payload back to their transport while Imperials are trying to stop them. I'm, I'm over fucking Battlefront. I'm going to be real with you. <laughs> like, the only thing I wanted out of Battlefront was a single player campaign. That's all I wanted. Right. And I've played the game a few times. A buddy of mine has it. And it's just a clusterfuck online. Yeah. It, it, it feels like I'm playing um, fucking Quake 3 Arena. <laughs> Which, back in the day, Quake 3 Arena was the shit. But Quake 3 Arena is designed to be crazy. This isn't designed to be crazy. Right. And it's just a fucking mess. Like, the nostalgia wears off quickly and then you're like, fuck it. Yeah, I, I mean, it is the... One of the... I, I, for me, one of the cool little tidbits for it is the fact that you do get to have that old school, like, oh, somebody's at your place and you can play two players there instead of having to strictly play with someone online. Yeah. Um, that, that sort of stuff is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I do wish there were more, there was a single player campaign through it, uh, would make the game, I think, more enjoyable. But um, I don't know. We'll just have to, yeah. We'll just have to kind of see. I mean, I play it from um, play it from time to time. Um, yeah, but the fact that there is no real single player campaign, it's kind of like, well, then what am I playing it for? Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> I have nothing but bad news today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Adam's the Grim Reaper of uh, sorry. gaming today. Listen, it isn't me. All right, I'm not closing this shit down because I was really excited is. about I was kind of excited about this one because this. So, all right, let's just get it. Um, Microsoft is going to be closing uh, Lionhead Studios, uh, which is the prominent uh, UK game development studio that ran Fable mostly. Um and with that, Fable Legends is canceled. That's been completely can canned, which is currently in beta. Hmm. Uh, so people are playing it. Um, Hanno Lem Lemke, general manager of Microsoft Studios Europe, uh, announced the decision in a blog post on the Xbox News website. Um, in the same ar article posted, uh, posted on Monday afternoon of last week, Lemke announced that the Danish studio Press Play would also be closed. Uh, so another studio called Press Play will be closed. Uh, Lemke wrote, these changes are taking effect as Microsoft Studios continues to focus its investment and development on the games and franchises that fans find most exciting and want to play. That almost was a fucking uh, punch in the mouth to both of those studios. Yeah. Like, no one wants to play your shit. Yeah. So we're closing it. Um, now, famous game designer uh, Peter Monahue's uh, opened Lionhead Studio in 1996, He's, which is best known for the Fable series, which is an awesome fucking series. I have all three of the <laughs> first ones. <laughs> um, it's always been a Microsoft exclusive title. Um, Microsoft purchased the studio in 2006 uh, with Molly Hughes employed as creative director across Microsoft Game Studios. Molly Hughes is known for... Um, populous too he made populous back when games like that were like what the fuck <laughs> you know so um he left in 2012 though he hasn't really been there um and opened an independent studio called 22 cans uh just as work began on fable legends actually when he left so let me skim over this real quick any prudent information due to uk employment law uh, Microsoft must begin a formal consultation period with the employees of Lionhead before the studio can be shut. It's kind of nice for the yeah. UK. Yeah. Closure is pl closure is all but certain. So this is this is kind of weird because this game 
was important uh, in a few ways. One, it was another Fable game, and everyone was excited about that. Uh, it was also going to be an online, like, play with your friends kind of thing, which was great because that hadn't really been uh, a Fable thing. You know, right. Fable's always been single player. Also, this was the game that they were using as the poster child to demonstrate cross-platform gameplay between Windows 10 and uh, the Xbox One. So this game was supposedly you could you could be playing on the computer, but with your friends on the Xbox on the same thing. Yeah, I thought I remember hearing that. Yeah. Something about so, that. So, I mean, it's an odd game to close suddenly. Right. When you... Uh, when you're using it as a demonstration piece, uh, the beta is still playable, although how much um, longer? Can't, yeah, how much longer is isn't really said. Um, also, you can't buy with the they have like in-game currency, like any free-to-play game. Mm. Uh, but you can't buy that anymore. And one good thing is Microsoft will be um, refunding all gold purchases for people who have been playing in the beta. No. Um, they're just refunding it. They're not even asking questions. So that's good. Yeah. You know, but it just kind of sucks, dude. Like these two games I was kind of looking forward to and they just like, you yeah, know, because I've, like, I've, okay. I've been hearing about Fables Legends for a long time. And so I was kind of like, you know, and I was like, going, oh, since, yeah, the, the Fables since 2012. They've been yeah. talking about since 2012. So I guess Microsoft's going in another direction. Mm. Or probably, whatever. Well, they're probably just going to use whatever ip not ip but uh software development that they use for those games and then put it towards something else yeah see that's what people don't realize like all the and even with like everquest that we were talking about before right any they could take the code and put it on something else you know what i mean like it's it's always going to be used somewhere else but it just sucks that it's not being used in fable because the Fable (laughs) universe is cool um i hope that this isn't the end of the franchise i hope to see another even another single player fable fable 4 or whatever but yeah uh, with Molly, who's not at the helm, it might not happen. So, the first three are great. Yeah. So. And they're backwards compatible on the Xbox One now. That's why I bought all three. Because my <laughs> wife always loved my wife always loved that series. Mm-hmm. And then once I saw they were backwards compatible, I went to fucking GameStop and bought them all for like five dollars each. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about backwards compatibility now. It's to see yeah. you, you can run it by the cheap ass games. And she never played uh, two and three, so she's all fucking oh shit, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, all right, now we're going to go into basically the second half of our show, which is actually now a discussion topic. So let's get on to that. Okay, so uh, this week's discussion topic, and those of you might have seen it because it kind of made a few waves uh, on Wednesday when the release of uh, Batgirl 49 came out. But it was based off of this article by Bleeding Cool, and everybody else kind of kind of took it to say, like, yeah, what what is the deal with that? So I'm just going to kind of read the article before we actually get into the discussion real quick. So this comes from Bleeding Cool. When Alan Moore wrote The Killing Joke for Brian Ballin, its status in DC continuity was never meant to be fixed as it became. It gave us a story that referenced Batgirl, Batwoman, Ace the Bat-Hound, and Batmite, characters that that, that did not exist in continuity after DC's Crisis of Infinite Earths rewrote the universe. And the final page of The Killing Joke can be interpreted as showing the death of the Joker, the comic. As Alan would say in Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow, this is an imaginary story, aren't they all? The Killing Joke portrayed Barbara Gordon as a retired superhero slash librarian in her 40s looking after her aging father and who is then shot through the spine by the Joker in an attempt to send her father, Jim Gordon, insane, just as the Joker believed happened to himself and Batman. Well, in the three decades since um, since its original publication, it has been considerable criticism over the themes of the original story of turning Barbara Gordon into a walking or not plot device and object that was used purely as the means to continue the plot to provoke Batman into action um, to defeat the bad guy, which to be fair is just as the Joker sees her. However, the comic didn't provide any resolution for her condition and she was cast aside as a plot device, uh, uh, cast aside as the plot device as she was. She was uh, principal in Gail Simone's 
famous women in refrigerators essay as a character used and abused solely to provide the male character with motivation. But with um, it was the crippling of Barbara by the Joker that saw the character transform into Oracle, the anything but helpless disabled crusader working with the rest of the Birds of Prey team, becoming a symbol of empowerment. The character that Simone, uh, Gail Simone herself would write on an ongoing basis in the Birds of Prey comic. Now, that went away when, to some degree, in the New 52 DC Comics relaunch, a change in continuity for the DC Universe with the return of Barbara Gordon as Batgirl, again written by Gail Simone, with Barbara Gordon having been rejuvenated and her condition healed, but, and DC were insistent upon this, with the events of the Killing Joke still in her history and up, um, uppermost in the character's mind. But when Brandon Fletcher, Cameron Stewart, and Babs Tarr recreated Batgirl for DC in the spirit very much against the Killing Joke. Indeed, when the variant cover depicted the events of the Killing Joke was commissioned by the DC marketing department, its presence was vehemently objected to by the editorial and creative team and was scratched. But this Batgirl is not that Batgirl. And in last week's Batgirl 49, as the comic as the book comes to a close before the DC Comics Rebirth event and the creative team goes elsewhere, a change was made. And it was revealed in, that a number of Batgirl memories were fake, implanted for nefarious purposes by the, by the fo, uh, f Fog, I guess. I thought you were going to say the foot. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Get, call the turtles up. See what the fuck's going. By the, uh, by the f Fog. Fweg, uh, fog, whatever. And now in the process... Of I've been listening to you and I haven't been following you along, so now I'm looking. <laughs> uh, but now in the process... Uh, and now in the process of being withdrawn, removed, remembered, and one of them is the killing joke. It was all a fake memory all this time? Well, the only... Uh, not the only one as well. Babs tweeted that we did... We undid some things. The interpretation was clear and fans were divided. Uh, some tweets had, uh, you change things, you beautiful humans. I hope you you get more of the new backstory because, buddy, I've got some questions. And another one said, they cheapened one of the most important moments in a beloved character, Barbara Gordon. Uh, but writer Cameron Stewart looked to clarify the uncertainty, but rather unclarifying the certainty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Now that we've a few days out from it, I thought on Backrow 49, I'm often interested in ambiguity as a narrative device. One of the things we intended for this issue was for it to be read in several different ways, depending on your interpretation and or preference. I believe that the individual's subjective interpretation of a work of art can matter as much as the artist's intent. What does an image mean to you specifically? How do you interpret it based on your own set of experiences? There's no right or wrong answer. That is, I think, a, an unusual concept for a superhero genre where material is often strictly deemed canonical or real or not. There's no right and no wrong way to read the page. It is what it is to you, and we deliberately set it up that way. If you want to read it as retcon, you're welcome and encouraged to do so. If you want the timeline as is, you're encouraged to do so. Your own personal truth is this story is what we want it, want you to take from it. How you read the page is how it is. And finally, and fitting, a quote from Alan Moore, this is an imaginary story, aren't they all? So, uh, I mean, I get, look, Karen Stewart, he's making some sense. I get it. But you can't overlook canon. I mean, in this particular art form, canon is important. Right. And most people are going to be like, wait a minute. Like, you can't – this is – this is. it's not like saying – they'll change it all the time. But when you change something major like that, it's like, fuck. You, you better be doing it for a good reason. Right. You know, what? and, and one of the major driving forces of Backer was that moment. Yeah. So now why is she doing it? She's just a kid who likes Batman? Right, <laughs> you know, so it's, I don't know, dude. Like it, it's kind of weird to me. What I have some, um, some personal feelings on it, just because. Uh, and Steve knows the Killing Joke is one of my favorite, oh yeah, favorite stories. I mean, I, I, I've read it 
hundreds of fucking times. And it's it's just a perfect story to me. And a lot of people say of otherwise. A lot of people say it wasn't that great. I'm like, well, fuck you. It was, <laughs> you know. So I, I I'm even looking. They have some uh, some shots of some pages in there. The artwork. I mean, everything just came together. And, yeah. And um, it's it's kind of depressing in a way. Yeah. Well, see, my problem with that is that look, you had it as part of if it wasn't to be part of canon. Why did the editorial team allow people to do so? Like, how did Oracle come about if it wasn't to be part of canon? You know, right. and, and why did it become so prominent? And why do we have a new Batgirl if it wasn't to be part of canon? Now, if you're going to go the new 52 route where it was like, okay, we've kind of, you know, Barbara Gordon is Batgirl. She's younger or whatever. And that's not part of it. Fine. Do it then. But don't wait five years into the new thing and then say like oh yeah it was kind of just a dream you know or it was a fake memory and it's like well that cheapens it in a, in a lot of ways it almost comes as close to saying that whole you know spider-man and or peter parker and mary jane getting married you know it kind of rises to that level of oh well you know in order for aunt may to live you you both can't be married anymore and we're going to take away everybody knowing Peter Parker's identity. It's like, well, you kind of made it a big deal. It's part of it. Now you take it back. So now everybody laughs at it. And the whole Ben Riley thing in Marvel, yeah. I mean, it, it just becomes, it cheapens it. It comes convoluted. Yeah. You know, there's so much happening and so much changing. And you know what? Unfortunately, and, and I'm a big fan of DC, but they need to pull it together, man. Yeah. The last couple of years, they, they're changing big things too much. You know, it's like I understand you want to have big events and you you want to you want to do stuff like that, but th with the with the new movies coming out, this is a perfect opportunity for DC to get their shit together and really go in line with with kind of the films, kind of like what Marvel's trying to do and stuff like that. Because DC, what the New Fifty Two was supposed to do is simplify things. Right. And I and I was a big proponent for this. I know Steve remembers. I said they need to do it. It's yeah. it, there's so confused after the darkest night shit and all it was so confusing. Well shit, even after people. all the fucking crisis of infinite earths, you know. Right. How many of Going those did they have? <laughs> How many right. times did they do that? And and for people who weren't there reading the 80s books at least you know, they you couldn't jump in without being confused out of your fucking mind for months. Oh yeah. You know, and the new Fifty Two came. It's like okay, cool, fresh start. Let's do it again. You know, and they did it right where you had an origin story for Superman, but you didn't have an origin story for Batman, and and because everybody already knows that, so let's just go. You know, right. And and I really dug it, but now it's like the new Fifty Two isn't new anymore. Right. But it's not exactly fucking old. You know, and now we're changing. It's this isn't the first change we had fucking um, convergence, right? Which was honestly a sloppy fucking event. I'm sorry. It felt you know, it, it just felt was. really flashpointy. Like it started off with a cool concept and then just kind of rushed everything at the right. end, and it just felt really flashpoint to me. And then flashpoint too. I mean, F flashpoint. I feel was a good way to do new to introduce new 52 but it should have been longer than six issues it, it should have been or at least have some oversized issues the best part of flashpoint for me was the film that came out yeah the animated movie it was dope as shit yeah. you know but the dc just needs to get it together man yeah like they have such a great history and these 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 characters and, and i do believe that a lot of dc characters if you're looking for something more gritty they get, they have some deep, deep, deep fucking stories they can get into, yeah. and but they're playing games. You can't keep, you're never gonna get anywhere if you keep starting over from the beginning, right? Like you us. Know, so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but you know what I'm We're saying? We're the DC I mean, equivalent of podcasting here, <laughs> right? And what they're doing with the Joker right now has been pissing me off. Like, there's, there's a lot of things that DC's doing that. I'm not saying they should do it my way. I'm not DC Comics. You know, it's their stuff. They can do what they want. We leave, that, I'm, I'm all... we leave that for the fanboys to. Exactly. I'm, I'm all for artists doing their art. I'm not going to tell them what to do, but I'm. I can definitely have an opinion. Right. You know, and and I, 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 I just don't like 
what they've done with the Batman current Batman story has been real weak for me. Yeah. Um, the uh, Superman actually hasn't been that bad. When he was losing his powers and all, I, I kind of dug that. Yeah, you know, I like when Superman kind of comes down gets to earth back a little. down to earth a little. <laughs> yeah, you know, because it gives it gives you a, it gives the reader a chance because and they have to do it with Superman every once in a while. It, it gives the reader a chance to see he's it's not the powers that makes him Superman. Like, right. yeah, that makes him it, it, he's Superman because he's the shit. Right. You know, he just he he has to help people. You know, and, and stuff like that. But I could ramble on about this all fucking day. <laughs> um, but Batgirl, to me, is probably the coolest secondary character in Batman's little lineup. Yeah. And I've, I've always liked Batgirl. And the reason I have, though, is because of that rich history and that, like, she came out of something so fucking dark. All right. And overcame it and stuff like that. But they want her to be bubblegum. I'm taking a selfie fucking... Right. Now. Well, that's the thing is, is like, you know, you see and, and this was the problem that I had with the people that were bitching about the Joker variant, because remember at the time of the Joker's anniversary, you know, they were commissioning that variant cover, which you saw in the in the article, which is in the show notes um, of the Joker with the new Batgirl. And like people got pissed off about it because it was yeah. insensitive or whatever. It's like to me, it's like. Will we stop looking at the image itself and take it in context of what it's being used for? Exactly. Nobody takes things in context. And the people who are screaming about it are the people that don't know the history. And yeah. to me, turning Batgirl, making Batgirl not have that dark, troubling history and turning her into like just some fucking stereotypical teenage girl is less feminist. All right. You understand. Right now, she's just what you would expect a teenage girl to be. Fucking, what was that one cover? She's blowing a bubble and taking a selfie. Like, yeah. I mean, why? Why did you take such a fucking deep and, and complex character and turn her into a fucking mean girl's fucking extra? Yeah. You know, it doesn't make any sense to me. And that's the thing. Like, you know, people say, like, you know, they did it to, you know, they, they did that because they wanted her to be more of a regular girl and to kind of. I guess kind of match up in a way with like the Marvel characters. But if you truly understand the Marvel characters, the Marvel women that are in there, they're not bubblegum and happy and good luck. You no. know, none of them. And DC too. And if they have, they have people running creative over at DC that, that are saying things like that. They're saying, Oh, we're trying to match it with Marvel. Don't. Yeah. Like Marvel is Marvel. DC is DC. And, Don't worry about what Marvel's doing. And, and and if you go back to any of the hardcore DC fans, why do they like DC? Because the stories are darker. Then that's why I like DC. And that's and it's not even it's not even about being darker. They're more they tend to be more complex. Yeah. They, Marvel and I'm not knocking Marvel at all because I love Marvel books too. Marvel usually has a formula to it. It's like this is the good guy. This is the bad guy. And then they and they take care of it. It's more of a classic way of telling a story. And they have some complex stuff. Civil War, of course. You know, I could go on for days with that. Um, but DC, are, DC has always had the books for me that you'll read when you'll, you, you could read it, put it down and go, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> and you're kind of – and not in a bad way, but you, you actually are sitting there going – fuck right like you're thinking about it you know what i mean and and yes unfortunately they're leaving out a lot of kids yeah with that kind of storytelling but they could simply just make a fucking dc for kids line right universe and keep it that way i just i don't want to see this become the norm i i don't want them it, it almost to me that they're trying to ignore the dark the darker side of DC, which is the best side of DC. Yeah. You know, and Marvel's just fucking chugging right along because Marvel, neither Marvel or DC are, are really doing better than the other. When it comes to comics, there's one month where Marvel's on top and there's another month where DC's on top. Uh, you know, we're not yeah. talking about movies really. Yeah. Well, I was going to say in comic book sales, cause I still get the, the, the releases from uh, diamond and stuff like that. And Marvel has the only two to three comics that come out of DC is usually Justice League, a Batman comic, and then some random DC comic that comes out. Yeah, but, I mean that's true too. But I'm I'm talking if you think about 
the near future when these DC movies start popping off. And if they do well, yeah. you're going to see DC books coming up a little bit. It, it, people have forgotten. The newer fans have kind of forgotten DC's there for the most part because yeah, cause there's Marvel. three Marvel movies a fucking year. Yeah, and TV you know? shows and, and, and all that. And TV that's... shows and all that. I mean, DC just now is starting to gain traction. It hasn't really been that long with the DC shows. And if you think about it, I mean, even the DC ones, you know, it's Arrow, The Flash, and Supergirl. You know, and yeah. of those three, one is a little, one is darker than the other two. So it's like, you know, it's like, you kind of need to pick it up, especially to get it out there. I think DC can do some real shit. I just, I, they just need to, they need to make a plan and stick to it. Yeah. It just seems to me that they keep changing the fucking plan. Yeah. They you always know, seem, and, they and, always seem to change it midstream too. Cause honestly, I thought the new 52 was going well. I was enjoying a lot of those books, and even when they did their their first and second cuts, I was like, "Yeah, those books were falling off." Yeah, you know, and and I I get it. You know, we're 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 trying to keep the lights on too. You know what I mean? Right. And I know that I know there was some fans of those books, but they weren't the bigger books. Right. You know, and yes, of course, there's going to be more than one Batman book, and there's going to be, <laughs> yeah. you know, eight, there's always eight, eight Batman shit. books and seven Superman books, and then the, and, <laughs> right. and everybody else. But of course, we're playing to the audience, right? Right. You know what I mean. But it's um, they just for some reason convergence happened, and everything has been going downhill yeah. from there. And it convergence was just a stupid idea. Yeah. DC loves to fucking do the multi universe thing to death. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so. Uh. Whatever. We'll see what happens. Man. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see how this works out. But my my personal thought is, if you were going to do a new Fifty Two where you were rebooting everything, you might as well have just gotten rid of the Killing Joke or anything of the old one and just start over. Yeah, you know, so because it did it did kind it was kind of weird how that was one thing with the new Fifty Two I didn't kind of fully understand was you had on the first month I'm reading the origin story of Superman he just got to fucking right. Metropolis. And then in the same month, I'm reading Batman where the killing joke has already happened. Right. And all this other – I'm like, well, what, where the fuck are we in yeah, the timeline? Exactly. You know. Grayson is already Nightwing and, you know. Yeah. You know, Todd so, is already Red Hood. It's like, wait, what happened? Wait, what? And then Damien out of nowhere, you know. So. All right. Well, I mean this could be one of a series of podcasts just simply on this book itself. Yes. <laughs> uh but it's on podcast number 72 of the <laughs> Killing Joke uh, critique. <laughs> I know. Now we're going to move on to page three <laughs> in right. on podcast 72. <laughs> each podcast is two hours long. <laughs> and it's like just it's and each episode is based on a panel. It's not even a page. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well. Thanks for checking out this week's show. You can subscribe and get this show every Monday downloaded directly to your listening device of choice. You can catch us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, or Libsyn. And if you're old school, just go directly to the website, lazygeeks.com. Also, please uh, throw us a comment. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Um, you can say hi. You can say bye. You can say fuck you. Whatever you got to say. Um, we don't get crazy well sometimes yeah <laughs> but only if it's funny that's what know. snapchat's for no <laughs> right uh, you can also catch us on social media facebook.com slash the lazy geeks uh, we're a google plus page we have uh we also uh have twitter instagram and chat uh snapchat all under the name the lazy geeks one word and if you don't want to do that you can just send us an email at thegeeks at lazygeeks.com. And that is it for this week. Um, oh, yeah. Also, just a reminder, guys, still submissions. You guys want to submit stuff for us to uh, talk about on the Way Team podcast in April because we're doing Viewer's Choice. So if you, uh, if you want to hear us talk about a future episode of any Star Trek, any, you know, incarnation, movie, what have you, just send us an uh, hit us up on the Facebook page or Twitter 
or just send us directly an email to thegeeks at thelazygeeks.com. Also, for the cheap seats, any movie that you want us to talk about that's currently on Netflix, let us know. You have until March 31st for us to decide our winners. So, uh, until next time, peace out. This has been a production of the Lazy Geeks Network, available only at thelazygeeks.com. Goodbye.